uh, before we close, we have one final presentation. Um, of course, I would like to welcome back Mr. Carl Mr. Irwin from Zambia. We can't leave without hearing this. <laughs> Good afternoon, Honourable Minister. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's always a tough one being the last presentation of the day, so I'm glad some of you have stayed to watch the Zambia's presentation. Uh, so if any of you would like to move forward, there's some nice pictures of farms, etc. You're welcome to do so. I think it's important, I, I'm, I'll make this very quick and I'll go through the presentation very quickly, but I think it's important to see Zambia is not only being developed by foreign uh, multinationals coming into Zambia, it is being developed by Zambian companies as well. When you have a look at Zambia products, we are a homegrown company, we had very humble beginnings in Zambia, we now employ 5,000 Zambians and contribute significantly to the economy and more importantly to the food security of the country. Just coming back, just again, we've been through the potential of agriculture in Zambia is enormous. We are the mini Brazil of Africa. We believe we're the mini Brazil of Africa. I think at Zambia we've shown it's not talk, we can actually do it. And uh, so again, uh, the country, it's a similar latitude to Brazil. What thing that we have is water resources. 42% of sub-Saharan Africa's water originates in Zambia. That is our real key, and I say in the world going forward, water is going to be the most important resource. Not metals, not gold, not whatever. Water is going to be that critical resource. Again, I alluded to it earlier, the macro, uh, the macro picture in Zambia is unrivaled. When you have a look at the crisis in Europe, the American problems and all the rest, I think we can be very proud just to quickly go through. This is one slide I would like to go through. Our average GDP growth 6.4% over the last five years. We've got ri rising foreign currency reserves. As a simple person, I don't understand how a country like America can keep running up larger and larger amounts of foreign debt. But again, we're a country, we've got growing foreign reserves, $2.1 billion uh, foreign reserves 2010. Uh, we've got single digit inflation, a stable currency. And most importantly, we have a sustainable external debt. So again, I think if you have a look at many European countries, they would love to be in that position with an external debt of 9.9% of GDP. So again, the fundamentals are right in Zambia. Again, Zambia, we pride ourselves on the farm to fork. We start, our production we starts at the actual growing of the crops and we end up with the actual retailing of our products through our own retail network uh, direct to the end consumer. A brief history, Zambia, very humble begin Zambia, very humble beginnings in 1994. Uh, we grew our company organically. Uh, we, uh, up to 2003, when we listed on the Lusaka Stock Exchange. Um, the, in 2005, we went into Nigeria with ShopRite when ShopRite went in. Uh, 2007, we went into Ghana again with ShopRite, uh, who we have a very close relationship with. Our first capital raise ever, up to 2008, Zambif had been organically grown business from reinvesting our profits back into our business. And 2008 was the first time we actually did a capital raise and took a step up uh, in our operations. Uh, 2011, Zambia was the second Zambian company ever to list in London after uh, the main mining company, the historical uh, mining company in Zambia. And we did a dual listing on, uh, on the London market. We did a big capital raise of just was $55 million. We did a rights issue in Zambia and uh, the untaken up element was placed on AIM in London. It's again a brief overview of the business, but again, we'll come to the financials. Again, Zambif is a growing company. I think from the time we started, we've grown at a compounded rate of around 20% a year uh, since 1994. So again, we are not a, a startup business. Um, the figures, they always like the quacha figures rather than the dollar figures. Proud to say we turn over just under one trillion Zambian quacha, eh? In US dollars, 207 million US dollars. 
Uh, but again, you can see all of our grass growing nicely. There's no doubt that demand for food is growing in our part of the world. And the challenge remains for Zambief to keep investing in all of our divisions to be able to keep up with that growth in demand for food. Again, we're a well-diversified business. We uh, no people think of us as a beef company. And again, we're using a slogan now, not just beef. You can see beef accounts for around 20 uh, just under a quarter of our business, we are a very well diversified business. It's one of our retail outlets. For Zambief, it all starts with the cropping. We uh, are the, uh, one of the major cropping operations on the continent. We have 8,000 hectares under irrigation and a further 9,000 hectares of dry land crops. For many of you to try and understand what 8,000 hectares is, it's most of our pivots are 80 hectare pivots which are one kilometer diameter so it's 80 kilometers by one kilometer so minister if you get in your car and you drive for 80 kilometers that's what we have under irrigation one kilometer wide the effect of that we produce 40,000 tons of soybeans uh, 45,000 tons of wheat and a further 20,000 tons of maize what makes Zambia unique as well, we can grow winter maize. If there was a food deficit in Zambia, we could grow a further 40,000 tons of maize during winter time, which there are very few countries anywhere in the world that have the, the climatic conditions to enable you to grow winter maize. So again, you can see our cropping division, that's where it starts. Brazil or South America are the leading chicken producers in the world because they're the best soya producers. We believe we have a strategic advantage in our part of the world, and it starts with the growing of the maize and the soyas, which ultimately we market as a value-added product, which is in the form of beef, chicken, milk, eggs, etc. Our beef division, we started off as a beef company. Again, uh, you can see turnover up 38% in the last year, uh, operating or gross profit up 26%, with, um, so again, a strong growing uh, part of our business with increased demand. Chicken, again, a fast-growing part of our business. It's uh, traditionally chicken is the, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's grown at 28% 20, uh, in the last year and uh, gross profit operating by 19%. Pork, and again, all of these divisions, the chicken division investing heavily again every year, expanding chicken houses, layer houses, taking on new outgrowers to meet the demand for that. Pork operations, again, a very exciting part of our business. Um, we are investing this year, it will be around $4 million in upgrading our pork processing plant and taking it to the level of, it, of as good as any other pork processing plant we believe on the, on the continent. We are looking not only at the Zambian market, but again, the challenge for us, we want to be exporters as well, as not only servicing the local market, but we are eyeing the region around us, and we believe we'll be able to export competitively into that region. So again, a, a very exciting part of our business. Again, 31% growth in the last year. Our milk division, uh, I think reference had been made to Anglo-America earlier on. In 1999, Anglo-America so when they were pulling out of Zambia, they had a, the largest dairy herd in the country. Everybody claimed that dairying could not make money and that it was madness to go into dairying. Zambia, Anglo America did not only make a mistake selling their mines, but they made a mistake selling their dairy. This is one of our most profitable parts of our business and it's an important focus area. We'll be investing again in expanding our dairy operations this year. Edible oils, again, we've shown manufacturing can work in Zambia. We took over Zamanita in 2008. The plant was run down, lack of capital investment in that plant. We have spent, by the end, well, by uh, the next couple of months, we will have done a $7 million upgrade of that plant, taking it to first world standards. We'll have upped the crushing capacity from when we took it over, it was doing 22,000 tons of soybeans up to 100,000 tons of soybeans. We'll crush 70,000, we hope 70,000 tons of soybeans through that plant this coming year. That plant had not crushed cotton before. 
We will we presently crushing cotton. We'll crush 15,000 tons of cotton. Now, more importantly for the country, it's value addition in the country. All of that raw material previously went out for value addition in our neighboring countries. We are now value additioning in the country. All the byproduct is the main protein for the livestock sector. So your soya cake is your main protein for feeding your chickens and your pigs. And obviously your soya, I mean your cotton cake goes into ruminants. So your cattle is a cattle feed. So all of that is staying inside the country now for developing the livestock sector in the country. Stock feed, as part of our investment in Zamanita, we put a stock feed plant on the back of Zamanita. It was an $8 million investment, and the reception has been absolutely overwhelming. Again, the potential for this, we can do all the value, every soya bean we can get our hands on in Zambia now, every oil seed, we will value addition, and our exports will be value addition exports. So again, we are looking to export, and we currently are exporting large quantities of stock feed into Zimbabwe. We're continuing to, and we're looking at our neighboring countries. The stock feed plant has been an overwhelming success, and again, value additioning the byproducts coming out of Zamanita. A mill and bakery, again, it's value additioning our winter crop, which is mainly wheat. So again, we put in a mill and bakery in 2005 so that we could value addition our wheat and put it into our retailing network. Leather and shoes, again, people ask, why are we in leather and shoes? Again, we produce, we currently this year will have had 44,000 hides in-house. We've got to do, we, we need to do something with that. The hide market internationally has collapsed. If we didn't have a tannery, our hides would be worth nothing, and we would probably be discarding those. Again, we value addition, uh, and we have a shoe plant. So again, our lower-grade hides, we value additioning all the way through to shoes, footballs, etc., and, uh, our, and we export our semi-finished leather into the Far East and South Africa. Palm project. Sam Beef, we, on things we do, we have a long-term view on things. Again, as part of Zamanita, we, Zambia imports 60,000 tons of edible oils per annum. So again, uh, we import Zambief. Last year, we imported 18,000 tons of palm oil out of the Far East. We have one of the most fertile countries on the continent. We believe we can produce palm oil in Zambia. As I say, our palm oil project uh, we will have 2,000 hectares of palms in the ground by the end of this year. I think, Sean, you mentioned you had planted 18,000 trees. Eh? We planted 250,000 trees. So you can appreciate how busy that has kept us. Everything, what has differentiated Zambi from most of our competitors in our part of the world is our retail network, which is the engine that drives our business. So again, it's easy to produce stuff, but you have to be able to sell it and get paid. We now have 117 outlets throughout the country where we are selling direct to the end consumer. We in every most high density areas. And again, it's been a major, uh, it's an extremely important part of our business. West Africa, again, uh, we, a uh, Zambian company, we went into West Africa in uh, 2005, we went into Nigeria, a very important part of our business. The growth potential is unbelievable. In Zambia, we have 12 million people. Nigeria alone, 160 million people. We, our operations just outside Lagos, I think in a 100 kilometer radius of us, we have, I think it's about 40 million people. It's just an unbelievable market. Again, we've taken it slowly, but again, it's an extremely exciting part of our business and an area we think will, has got unlimited potential. I think we don't need to go through any of those. Um, growth potential, I'm afraid I don't have a picture of our CEO as the beef, uh, Mr. Beef picture. So again, thank you very much to everybody and thanks for staying on for the last presentation. <laughs>